Hey folks, Todd Colburn here with your Aerospace Structures series. This lecture is on fasteners and this lecture, sub-lecture is going to focus on lock bolts. So this little slide shows how a lock bolt operates. It's off the internet and there's a couple videos here that you can watch to understand this. But basically what we have is a swaged collar fastener, which means Instead of thread, the thing gets larger and smaller, like that analogy of going up a path to, up a mountain to a witch's castle. There's no path going up. Each path just goes directly around and doesn't climb. What this means is, in order to install the fastener, we need to, we need to engage the nut with the head. And what they do is they have a specially shaped nut and a specially shaped tool that basically squeezes that nut into the swages so that the nut, which has little swages like, has a, uh, gets pressed into the swages in the fastener like this, you have a permanent fastener. It then breaks off the fastener as described in this slide. There's two videos here. I'll give you a QR code for those on the next, on the next slide that show how that works. Okay. So, uh, this is kind of how our swage fastener looks. We're going to have a neck down section. We're going to have two kinds of heads. Uh, and uh, basically, this table is going to give us these strengths. This table is four tables in one. You have two major tables. This is the table for steel lock bolts. And if we look here, we see that this part of the table with the diameters, that is the table for aluminum lock bolts. And then within the steel lock bolt table, you have one that pertains to steel fasteners, excuse me, tension headed fasteners, and one that pertains to shear headed fasteners. So the reason for the difference, if you think back to arrow 3261, we saw that if you had a fastener being pulled through sheet with the tension on it, uh, on sheet, what happens is first you have a P over A stress in the bolt shank itself, and then when the load gets up here where the shank attaches to the head, if you look out around the periphery of this, you see that that tension force P actually tries to yank this shank right through the head of the bolt. And if since the, the stress for that, the shear stress around that line of interface will be that force divided by that distance around it, which is actually pi d, where d is the shank diameter, times the, the head thickness t. If that is too low, what happens is, if this is below FSU of the bolt, then this will fail before you develop the full tension strength of the fastener. So what, in order to make sure that your fastener will uh, develop its entire tension strength, you need to have a head that is deep enough so that that shear stress is not critical. Now, if we are using for a fastener for a tension application, then we'll generally choose a tension headed fastener. If we're using it in shear, if you use a fastener to attach a couple plates together in shear, then like this with a force, now all the interface happens right here. And so, you are, don't really have any measurable pulling off force of the head, except for maybe a little bit of prying, which means you don't need quite as deep of a head of fastener to develop the full shear strength of the fastener. And therefore, a lot of times we'll use a smaller head on a shear head on a shear fastener, which means its head is not as deep. And uh, this, you just need a head that's sufficiently uh, thick and wide to develop the full shear strength and not one that's so thick as to develop the full tension strength. Actually, uh, if you don't aren't using that faster for tension, then having a tension faster will actually have a lot of extra weight once you count all the fasteners on the aircraft because of that extra head weight. It also interrupts the airflow more. So whenever we don't need a tension faster, it's common to use shear headed fasteners. Going back to our table, and if we have a steel fastener, we look up our diameter, and if it's we got to ask ourselves, is a tension head or a shear head? If it's a tension strength, then this is our head, then this is our shear strength, this is our tension strength. If it's a shear headed fastener, you'll notice it has the same uh, shear strength, but the tension strength 
is reduced, and that's because the head now becomes critical. Now, if we have an aluminum lock bolt, then these are our allowables, and we only have the data here for tension headed fasteners. Once again, if we have a 5 16 we come over here, there's our shear strength, there's our tension strength. Okay? So that's how it works, and that's how we analyze lock bolts. Now, as with other threaded fasteners, and this is not a threaded fastener, if we have shear alone, tension alone, or bending alone, we can write our margins of safety directly on just that one force or stress. However, if we have a combination of shear and tension on the bolt, we will need to reuse the right to stress ratios and then use an interaction equation. Now, uh, steel lock bolts and aluminum lock bolts have different, uh, different interaction equations that apply to them. So uh, actually, uh, before we move on to that, here is a QR code to those two videos I showed on the previous slide. If you use, you can use your phone or any other QR reader to go and watch those videos. Those were put out by somebody else. They're great little videos that show how that lock bolt actually operates, okay? So going back, this is the interaction equation that's valid for steel lock bolts, and this is the interaction curve. This is the interaction equation that deals with aluminum lock bolts, and this is the interaction curve. Once again, the curve is shown right here. We can write our margin of safety in the normal way. And for aluminums, it's right there. Now, if you, uh, or if your margin of safety is anywhere in this range, you can just read this curve directly by plotting your RS and your RT plus RB, and then you can actually read the distance between those lines that shows what margins of safety those apply to in order to get a quicker and rougher margin of safety. Folks in Arrow 3261 are going to be expected to read this within the accuracy of this, which means report it with whatever error is buried in the table, but not have any error you do to your carelessness of reading. Okay, That's all we've got. That's how lock bolts work. Make sure that you have understood all of the lectures for Arrow uh, for this, for Lecture 10. And once again, we have, uh, we have the rivet lecture, we have the lock bolt lecture, we have a other aerospace fastener lecture, and then we also have that bending lecture that's a part that's a 9D is also applicable. So you might want to go back to lecture 9, it's the lecture video 9D, and review that for bolt bending. Okay, enjoy.